the aim is to get in the Premier League. And ultimately, you want to have a legacy. And it was only weeks and weeks later when we got the CCTV and we actually had a look what actually happened that it, the seriousness uh, was evident. He came to me and he said, Coach, he said, I'm so sorry to have upset you. What I say is, I, I cannot say we are best, uh, best friend. Me and Troy are something different, you know. I felt like we played together for all 10 years, which he was in, in, in Watford. I don't, I don't normally get emotional. Yes! Yes! Watford FC! Watford FC! Watford FC! Watford FC! Watford FC! Watford FC! Watford striker Troy Deeney has been jailed for 10 months for attacking a group of students in Birmingham. The 23-year-old was recorded by CCTV cameras kicking one of the victims in the head. Deeney admitted a fray and was sentenced along with three other men at Birmingham Crown Court. Watford say they will issue a full statement in the next few days. He knew he was going to court. He just had a call off his solicitor. We'd both been on the conference call to tell Troy that he was going to get a prison sentence. We were at court two or three days later, and the solicitor was quite adamant that he was going down for at least 12 months, maybe longer. At the same time as that, Troy's father had just died of cancer, quite tragically, and it was a really low ebb for Troy. And I do remember we, we came out of the box and we went for a little walk together, and Troy said, look, I'm gonna take this on the chin. You know, I don't, his wife at the time, Stacy, he'd said to Stacy, he doesn't want her there for the hearing. He didn't want anybody there at all. He'd take it on the chin, he'd go down, he'd serve his time, and he'd make sure he came back in a completely different character. How did you deal with the situation when he told you he'd been arrested and charged with a fray? Yeah, that was a, a really strange moment. Um, you know, as a community club, there was a lot of question marks over it. Um, I personally was very strong in the sense of nothing changes, he has to do what he has to do, but he's a Watford player. Um, fortunately, you know, the powers that be stuck by that. People who, I th who would be respected in the game, you know, and, I, and I, I was quite taken back by it, to be honest. It was quite, you know, thinking, all right, he's made a mistake, we've all made mistakes in life, you know, I don't need somebody like you to come and throw it down, throw it at me, you know. The details were sketchy. Um, as you can appreciate, it was only weeks and weeks later when we got the CCTV and we actually had a look what actually happened, that it, the seriousness uh, was evident. The one thing I would say about that, at no point did Troy try to hide from his responsibilities. And I'm, I know now he still looks back at that with a certain amount of shame about what occurred. Uh, but it was a turning point. And the, and, the, and the strength of that is, do you take that on the chin and do you grow as a human being? And he did. I was still adamant, and I would told them so. Yeah, all right, we'll see, we'll see. That's, you know, I didn't get into any arguments about it. I just thought, well, well, we'll see. And I'm sure his ability, once the penny drops with young players, you'll see a, 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 a player, you know. The club handled it extremely well. Sean Dice particularly managed it brilliantly when he became manager. And, and Troy repaid him in spades, by the way. I mean, he scored an awful lot of goals for, for Sean and, and moved them away from the relegation zone. I think he got them up to 10th that season. Mm -hmm. he's, he's seen an awful lot of difficult times in his life. And I think that makes you stronger. It can make you fold or it can make you stronger. And it's made him stronger. Well, he's been a long-term project at the club and I think players take different times to develop in their belief. Um, we, we spoke early season about someone being the, the next one for Danny Graham yeah. and young Marvin left and then we're looking for the next one to be their version of them and, and Troy's standing up to the play at the moment and nicked another goal today. You know, if you talk about a club, a community club that wants to develop and help people, then you can't just take all the good stuff. You can't just develop and help when it's all good news. Sometimes you've got to help people when it's not such good news, and I thought that was important. To his family's credit and to his credit, that he's, he's developed everything that he's learnt over the years and got to the stage where he is now, which is the most pleasing thing for me. It's well documented what happened with Troy getting a prison sentence. The chat came on 
various visits that um, I made to prison, uh, to see Troy when he was in uh, Warrington. And we had long chats then about the fact that literally it wasn't a case he, ha he, he might have one or two chances when he came out. He would have one chance, one chance only. And if he didn't take that one chance, and if there was any setbacks at all, that was the end of any form of football career. I looked like a 1970s bodybuilder on my first day back at Watford. For three months in prison, I had had a haircut and I'd been throwing the weights around. Well, <laughs> it was a little bit scrappy, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but as I say, it's, I, I don't get foolish by that. I just threw into people's eyes and I tried to understand what can offer, what they can do. And we Troy immediately understood it was, you know, it was perfect for us. The prison sense and then taking him into the final year of his contract. And he was going to be a Bosman at the end of it. And he came back and was a bit part player to start off with, eventually got in the team. And when he got in the team, he never stopped scoring. And every week, I remember I used to have Gianluca Nani at that time call me and say, can we do a new, I was going to do the accent then, but I'll, I'll forgive you the accent. Can we do a new contract for Troy? And I said, well, what do you want to offer uh, Gianfranco? Um, and the offer was never enough. And eventually it got round to April. At that point, I think Troy was on 20 plus goals. And uh, we settled on a new deal. And it was a very good new deal, hard earned by Troy. And after that, we never looked back. He never looked back. We knew how important it was uh, for, for us. And also we knew how important uh, what for what would be for him. So it was a perfect combination. I think uh, there was, uh, there was, it was a no loser situation. Um, and again, as I said, we, we enjoy each other's company because he liked what we were doing on the pitch. Um, and he, he, you know, he helped us, me, he helped me and the, the whole team to you know to make what we were doing on the pitch more successful. So it was, it was, you know, a perfect combination. I remember going into Gianfranco's office and he told me I was the seventh choice striker. But I told him to give me a week to prove myself and he turned out to be the manager who got the best out of me. I did have that conversation. Obviously, I, I wanted him very motivated. I knew his character. <laughs> so I knew that I needed to give him a, a little push. And um, but I, I, I loved the, the answer he gave me. Um, he said to me, fine, I accept the challenge. And he gave me the time to work on myself and uh, I will prove you that uh, I'm not going to be the seven. I was talking to, to Daniel Pugil and uh, just like discussing what what footballer can do like if uh, going to the prison and then uh, we finished that conversation and uh, after a couple of couple of months like we never come back about that conversation because he showed the quality on the on the page and nobody cares if he was in the in the prison or not. I do remember the first game he played when he was uh... Certainly, it wasn't his preparation wasn't great, but he came in and immediately made a difference for everyone, not only for for the team, for the crowd, and uh, and uh, so I immediately realized it was uh, it was uh, you know perfect perfect player player for us. I think um, well, obviously I can only speak from like September time, but I think before I came back, we wasn't really doing too well. And it, obviously, a lot of players coming in transitional period, and you know the gap of trying to get people playing a certain style of football. But obviously, once that clicked, you know, um, it really did tear teams apart. The Adelfield game was uh, was uh, was important. Uh, we changed uh, the system for that game. I think we needed to do something to give a little bit more balance to the team, and. Um, and you know, we played a fantastic game. We played, Troy scored the winner with the penalty, I think, uh, if I remember well. And, uh, you know, it, it was great. It was uh, just just the, the, the beginning. Probably in that game, we changed we change, uh, pace, really. I know from the beginning, he's uh, 
strong fella up front, you know, winning the headers, fight with the with the defenders, and uh, that's helped me. And uh, I was playing on the pitch, like help him with uh, with my movements, you know, to to find the best partnership uh, this possible. And uh, I think uh, like our connection uh, was very special. Dini. Now look at the pace of Vidra, he's too quick for everyone here, he's through, Matej Vidra, beautiful goal, fine finish, pace, precision, pretty much perfect scoreline for Watford, who lead 3-1. He and uh, Troy had a very strong uh, um, confrontation, and one, one of them was in the second year, uh, where uh, there were a lot of uh, difficulties, uh, some problems with the club, some issues with the club, and uh, the results were not going very well. And uh, Troy, as normally, is, is very straightforward on these things. But I felt in that moment that it wasn't necessary to be that, uh, you know, we needed more to get together rather than be strong with each other. So I remember there was a meeting, I can't remember exactly what uh, before which game it was, but it was during the week we had a meeting and uh, actually it was after a game, it was at, uh, the day we started uh, the training after a, after a match and uh, so I got, I got this meeting and I was quite strong with everyone, but in particular with him, I faced him straight away and I, and I did what I thought uh, it, it, they was completely wrong in what he was doing. And um, strangely, uh, Troy didn't say anything. And, uh, you know, he took it on. Uh, I remember that uh, at, at the end uh, of, because also it was a conversation which I didn't accept anybody to, to speak after I, I spoke. I let everybody speak before. And, and I said, okay, now I speak and nobody has, has allow, is allowed to speak after me. And I was very, very hard, especially with him. But I appreciate his reaction. Uh, he said to me, he came, uh, we went into the training session and he came to me and he said, coach, he said, I'm so sorry to have upset you. And maybe I, you know, you thought I was going against you or, or whatever. I wasn't helping. And he said, but uh, you, I want you to, I want to let you know that you are, you know, a coach that I respect a lot, and not only as a coach, but as a person. So if I did something wrong, I apologize. I, w I can't actually remember where I was, apart from my reaction involved sort of like running around a room somewhere when he actually got the winning goal. Um, now it was unbelievable. And uh, it, that that uh, sends shivers down your spine and brings a lot of people to tears when they watch that. Even now, it's just an iconic goal and uh, the celebration. I'm not sure he's happy with the physique when he took the shirt off. I think mean, that might have actually improved over the years. But uh, yeah, what a great moment, Zola and uh, and Troy. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's probably the greatest goal ever scored at Victory Road, isn't it? As far as the impact, can we think of another one? Forestieri. Here's Hog. Do not scratch your eyes. You are really seeing the most extraordinary finish here. When you do that, that perfect execution without, uh, you know, hesitating anything, it shows that the kind of uh, person, the personality you have. So it was, it was a magnificent moment. I think that is one of my best moments in football. That, that doesn't include uh, only, only the coaching moment, but also the football moment. The aim is to get in the Premier League. I'm not going to be sitting here saying, oh, I'm happy to just kick my feet up now. I've got four years, I'll see me through till I'm 30. Anybody that knows me, I'm not that, that way inclined. I, uh, I want to go and do better than last year. And ultimately, you want to have a legacy, uh, whether that be winning things or just people coming back like 10 years down the line and people are like, oh yeah, I still know who I am. That's the sort of thing that I, I want to do. With him, the team was more brave. They are uh, feel more uh, more powered and uh, 
more uh, more strong it was really important for the for the for the team it's like uh, <laughs> for don't use some wrong uh, words but it's uh, uh, like kids uh, where the father is with uh, with them they are uh, they are more brave more uh, more uh, more stronger and this is sensation what i have with uh, where i have this uh, this guy on the field how good was troy I know when I was in Spain there before I come, I know he scored a lot of goals, he's scoring, he's doing well. He and Vidra then before I joined the team. So when I joined the team and I started playing with him in championship, I think he's one of the best finisher I've played with. So he scored a lot of the goals, uh, 18, uh, 18 goals. For another side, I am I am I am working with uh, with four really important uh, important strikers like uh, like uh, Igalo, Mati Vidra, Fernando Forestieri and him too and all these people uh, score the goals and uh, score important uh, important goals. It's, it's not only physical, it's not only strong but it, it takes its chance when it comes you know it's a good finisher, it's a good goal scorer you know so his attribute is very strong when he gets the ball, uh, if we give Troy three chance out of in a game, he's gonna he's gonna score like two, you know. So it's a good finish, I would say. He scored a lot of the goals, but his personality and his character character push us in right uh, in right uh, direction. It's uh, uh, in this time uh, in the, this time like two more experience and two more important character in the dressing room was uh, Aurelio Gomez and uh, and him and uh, in the in the in the tough moments uh, always they find the right words they push the team in the right uh, right direction I'm, I try to take things off people that I've been around obviously used has been a massive one uh, Tommy Mooney uh, when I was at Warsaw he was captain and I think they're the sort of people that you can you can look to in times of if we go for a sticky patch, A you can either give them the ball or you know, Moons' case used to be if he was struggling, just kick it up top and he'll with his own flick on and you know, win a foul or something and just relieve the pressure. Um obviously my role would be more, you know, scoring goals, I'd imagine. The same thing as Mooney but scoring goals as well and uh you know, trying to get the fans involved, that's, that's probably my big thing, I think. Trying to keep us all as one and all goes in the right direction. If you find uh, the best connection with the, with the strikers, uh, and you're doing well, which we can say like we did two years together, which we played two years together and uh, like we exactly knew where the the other strikers are on the pitch if we play together and uh, all the time trying to play to each other help to each other which uh, i was so happy because you know when uh, when the team winnings and uh, you find the best partnership what you can find which i can say that the i was my best partnership in uh, in my football career so you know like I felt like we played together for all 10 years which he was in in, in Watford I've never had a partnership like Troy in my whole career I've played with a lot of strikers like a twin striker and all that but me and Troy are something different you know Troy is an unselfish footballer so sometimes when the team needs him to drop into midfield, Troy for me could be greedier as a striker. If he was greedier, Troy would have 15 goals plus a season. The fact that he's selfless and puts team before himself means that he's averaged probably one in three games and he could have pushed that better. He's got the ability to be a lot more prolific than that. I can't really remember the games, but I know we play like three, four games together and the way we move, the way he makes run, the way I make my run, it's like we even discussed that before the game, you know, but we did not discuss anything, we did not talk about it, we did not even 
train. Sometimes you don't even know he's going to start the game. But when we go inside the pitch, if he moves this way, I already know what he's trying to do. If I move this way, you already try to. Uh, you already know what I, what I want to do. You know, so the thing just click. You know. Uh, his score against Boro at home is uh, was a tough game for uh, for us. Uh, Boro in this time was in in uh, in high uh, high level, and uh, this day he scored the goal. This day he is uh, working with the, with the team. This day he take a decision. Okay, I will this uh, win this uh, this game. Depend uh, how Troidini wake up. Uh, sometimes if he wants, he can. Uh, Made uh, make a lot of the of the thing. I'm not selfish. Just like uh, I think he is not a selfish too. So that's maybe why we played so well together, scored so many goals, helped uh, the team. You know, be in the final, then second year promoted, which uh, Eagle helped too because you know, so I had I don't know 24 goals, yeah. Eagle over 20. I had I had 16, which uh, is incredible for uh, for the team in championship to have uh, three strikers score over 15 goals. You know. Uh, this is after the the Brighton game where we arrived in our uh, training uh, training camp, and we know we are a Premier League uh, team. I don't I don't normally get emotional. Yes! Yes! It was a strange uh, celebration in the in the. In the bus, and uh, where we we go outside of the of the bus, we I don't know what I need to do it, and he don't uh, know too. And we, I believe we take a decision for. I don't see, well, <laughs> but I believe we take a decision for drink one beer, on the on the parking around in the in training in the in training ground. Uh, what I says, I, I cannot say we are best uh, best friend, but uh, at the end our relationship was uh, successful. We, I build, I respect uh, him and everything what uh, is around him, uh, and at the at the end at the at the, at the end uh, I believe with the time he he starts to respect uh, me and us who he, people who is working with him uh, more than in in uh, in the beginning. The next time we see you on the pitch, it's going to be in the Premier League. Just how excited are you to have Premier League football playing in front of these uh, I'm very happy. Are you not happy? Well, my first impression of Dini was like uh, I can touch the skin of the woofer. My okay. God, a bit. Maybe in the slum. I don't put things there. Don't say that. No. Uh, we took the Premier, uh, the Premier League then by storm on our way. We are destroying defenders, scoring goals and all that, you know? He was the, the right player to, to shoot that penalty and all of us were in his hands, in his foot, in his foot. But uh, I was sure, I was sure, uh, I trust him. 